Can you say and spell your name and then your title? Uh, Kevin, K-E-V-I-N, Lovell, L-O-V-E-L-L, -L, Commander. Okay. So I guess, you know, talk to me about what brought you guys out here in the first place. So this has been a, a decades-long uh, issue over here on Shasta Drive. We've got multiple complaints from residents uh, about this one house with uh, drugs and guns and people with, wanted, with warrants. Uh, Every type of complaint you could think of, people coming and going and going through their yards, taking stuff from the neighbors, things like that. So we started an investigation. Uh, it started really uh, 10 years ago with just coming over uh, for calls for service. We came over here last year, started picking up where we were finding multiple stolen cars here at, you know, during the week. Uh, we attempted to come over and serve some warrants, had to chase people to get warrants served. And so uh, earlier this year, I asked the investigative unit at South to take a look at the nuisance law, uh, meet with the, we met with the DA, uh, General Funk. We spoke with him about the issues going on over here. And he, he said, give me the information and we'll do what we can to help you. And the investigative unit uh, at South at that time did an amazing job pulling up uh, incident after incident after incident, 200 plus incidents where the police have responded over here. Uh, multiple warrants served, uh, multiple stolen vehicles taken, uh, guns and drugs and things like that. So it's, a, it's been a decades long issue. and. We worked with the community over here. We meet with them regularly, uh, where they voice their their concerns and their frustrations, really. And so they're all here uh, to support this event and to support us, and we're here to support them. And you actually met with the homeowners back in September. What did that conversation look like? That was actually I was here. Uh, I located a stolen car in front of his house. He pulled up, and I got out and spoke with him. I said, you know, Ernie, this is this is a decades long problem. This is not. This doesn't need to continue. You need to do something about this. You need to straighten this out. Your neighbors are frustrated. Uh, you're taxing the police department with all these services coming over here. And uh, he didn't really seem concerned about it. He said there's really nothing he can do about it, and he went on his, on his way. Talk about how rare it is to issue a padlock on a resident. Yeah, so this is, I think, in my 24 years here, this is the only second one on a house that I, I believe has been served. The other one was in East Nashville, as I remember. Uh, so doing a padlock on a residence is not normal. Uh, it's not. It's usually businesses that are that are nuisance businesses, you know, clubs, things like that, uh, markets that are are considering seeing high incidents of crime and things. So a house in a neighborhood like this that's relatively quiet is usually pretty unheard of. So where do we go from here then? So it gets padlocked, and then what happens from there? Because I've covered, you know, businesses being padlocked, but how does the residence? So once they board this up, it'll be padlocked. Uh, NDOT will board it up physically. We'll put a sky cop out here so we can see and monitor, make sure no one's going in or out. And then it'll go through the, the court system. So uh, a judge will hear the case. Uh, once they've heard the case, they'll either give him time to uh, straighten it out and move on with life, or if he can't do that, they'll order him to sell. Is there, uh, I know there's a lot of homeless people here, and the homeless advocates here. Was there people squatting in the house too? Uh, they weren't squatting in the house. They usually stay in the back. Uh, he has a, a shed back there and he has a garage that's multiple levels. And so uh, the unhoused people will come over here and they'll stay in the back of the, of the property and come and go as they please. Uh, and so that's another issue that was, that was going on over here. Those people would come and go, but they would go through people's yards and take things. And so having homeless impact here uh, to give them services right away is, is really helpful and really beneficial. You know how well, I've heard that inside the homes Yes, it's worse than deplorable. Yes, there is. Um, you can barely walk through some spaces. There's, uh, if you've seen the movie Hor or the show's Hoarder, with the little little narrow spaces to try to get through areas, it's like that, and it's just it's nasty. It smells, right? uh, yes. Were there uh, animals inside? Because I, I talked to neighbors who said that they had this strong odor. Uh, that they would smell just walking from the street. Yeah, we didn't see any animals inside. There was a pen out back, but there wasn't an animal in there, so I don't know if, if the animals were are gone or, or where they went, but there weren't any inside when we went in. Do you know how many people live in there? Uh, usually just him and his daughter. Uh, he does have people that live in the back, and it can vary from time to time. Uh, eight people today. Uh, usually during the week when I come over, there's probably five or six just hanging out, and so it's hard to tell who's in there. But uh, he lives here with his daughter in that house. You talk about kids in the neighborhood? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and so not just the kids in the neighborhood, but the neighbors uh, have been telling us for years that they're afraid to walk down the street. The kids can't come out. They can't walk their dogs. 
we had a neighbor move because of this house. Uh, she'd been here for several years. She was a, a ex-military, retired from military and lived here, and she had to leave because she just couldn't take what was going on. So um, when we first started coming over here, things quieted down a little bit, and people started to come out and feel like they were okay, and then it kind of picked back up. So uh, today I know that a lot of the neighbors are here uh, that I, I'd love you all to talk to, but just seeing what's going on now, uh, we were up here up the street, and a neighbor came out and yelled, thank you, from the door. So it's just, it's amazing to see what one house, how detrimental it can be to a neighborhood like this. So Is the homeowner be charged with anything? Yeah. We're looking into charges right now. He's going to be interviewed, him and his daughter, and then there probably will be charges. So what does this mean for other, you know, nuisances, houses and neighborhoods that could be nuisances? You know, what's the possibilities of those being padlocked? You know, I, I know you said this is rare, but, you know, this kind of re- Free ups that possibility, right? Or what does this mean for them? So it means that uh, they should know that we're looking, that we have a good relationship with the DA's office, we have a good relationship with Codes and NDOT, and if we see that there's a nuisance house, that we will look into everything they're doing and pull everything we can uh, to try to get them to change what they're doing and change their ways. How do you feel about the outcome? This is an amazing outcome. I'm happy that we were able to get in here, no one got hurt. Uh, we've got the area cleaned out. We've got people that need help getting help, and we're holding uh, the homeowner accountable for what, what he's been doing for decades. Uh, you talked a little bit about, you know, the, the smell and just, like, people being around. Can you just tell me a little bit about the nature of a lot of these calls, these over 200 calls, with the you know, noise, just the smell, all these you know, people being outside? What was what was kind of the things that you were constantly seeing, people calling and complaining? So, so we were getting calls about gunshots going off. We were getting calls about people loitering in the front yard in the driveway doing drugs openly. Uh, we were getting calls about uh, abandoned vehicles in the front of the yard, in the front of the road uh, that were stolen. We, we took several stolen vehicles out of here. And uh, we also got a lot of calls about suspicious people that we came over, and those people were mostly wanted. We had to chase you know five or six out of here a couple months ago that we had a, a long pursuit. Uh, down the street, so, so that's that's what the nature of those calls. Thought that was me. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, all good. All good. Good. I have one more question. Does the people living in the shed? Do you know anything about them? Are they? Do they have a relationship with the homeowner? Are they, um, you know, people who are homeless? Are they immigrants? Do you know they, anything? Yeah, they are unhoused individuals. They, they, the relationship they have with the homeowner is that he allows them to come on his property. Uh, other than that. There may be some type of relationship where they're bringing stolen property and he may or may not know about, uh, but there is a lot of property on the, in the residence that will be looked at as far as that. But, yes, they are not in the house, and a lot of those are back there getting services right now. Thank you. Yep. How Thank many, you all. How many people were removed again? And Eight people. Were, and how many people were charged or about to Two right now with warrants. Mm -hmm. How about standing warrants? Okay. Two of the eight. Two of the eight had outstanding warrants. Okay.